Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of our slash entitled parents. In today's episode, EP demands a 50% discount after a very minor inconvenience. Anti-maskers strike again. EM lets her son destroy 100 years old antique table. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. EP demands a 50% discount after a very minor inconvenience. On mobile. Big hands and a small phone keyboard doesn't cooperate much, so sorry for errors. Also this has been sitting in my drafts for months, so sorry if things don't exactly click perfectly. Before I start, I want to preface and say that I have high-functioning ASD autism, and so my social skills are limited, but I try to work my way around it being as social as I can. So that's why you don't see a lot of conversation in this post compared to my prior posts here. That, and my work surprisingly doesn't have many Karens running around given our location, we're smack dab in the middle of a retirement community, but we're the only store for the western side of my state. I thought my entitled parents' stories would end with my now prior neighbor, but alas, entitlement has hit my work. I work for a hardware store in the US as what they call a customer sales associate. I'm one of six CSAs who are tasked to work in our paint department within the days. Out of those six, I volunteered to do closing hours, I'm a night owl so I usually don't wake until 1 to 2 p.m. Tonight was a quiet night for me and the closer for our sister department until I had two women, who I can assume are mother and daughter, approach my paint desk with some very worried and irritated expressions. I walk by and ask how they're doing and what I can help them with. The mother, mid-sixties, explained that she returned her paint due to it having the consistency of jelly. I get confused and grab the can from our return to manufacturer cart so I can examine and try to diagnose it. Lo and behold they were right, it was like jelly. I asked them the usual questions about storage and use and saw no clues in how it could have reached this state I and their home. I then referenced about our freight and how sometimes stuff like this happens. I explained to them that I will remake the paint and even discount it with a manager being notified. As I'm toiling through the list of assistant managers and department supervisors on the radio apps for the inventory phones, one of my assistant managers walks by with his lunch slash dinner, and I catch him and ask if he could spare five seconds to look at the paint to confirm a discount. He says sure and examines the paint as I'm citing why it was returned and the customers who wanted it replaced. He said to discount it by 20%, which is huge given we only discount paint by $2 to $5 depending on the issue. This $40 paint was now $31, but I decided to deduce it to $30 to round it out. Fast forward, the two arrive and I have this conversation, the mother will be labeled as EP. EP, is it ready? Me, yep. It is, I spoke to my manager and told them about the paint, and they said to discount it by 20%, but I decided to discount you a little more dash. EP, you mean to tell me that you discounted by 20% because of my troubles? This is ridiculous, and you know it. Me, I'm sorry but I'm following what my manager had ordered me to do. EP, how old are you? Me, 21. EP, I'm insert age in the 60s here, you think you would have discounted me to 50% because I had to paint it? It was clear she didn't, as she may have likely hired someone to do it, but either way it was a frustrating moment. Me, unfortunately no ma'am. Though I'm terribly sorry about the issue with your old can, but I will not discount it further as my manager had requested me to discount it by 20%, and I even gave you a little more than 20%. EP then is pissed and asks to speak to the manager that discounted it. I explained him that he is out on lunch and is the only one to know our department very well. She asked if I could interrupt him and I also said no because of company policy. She then asked for a list of all the managers and it was at this point that I put my foot down and said no. They then walked off to check out swearing to call a manager. After that, I went over to customer service with the old Ken to return it. A good friend of mine from CS actually asked me about the two women, and I explained to her my side of the story. 
She said she also had an interaction with EP prior to her coming over to my paint desk. Anti-maskers strike again. Here's some before the story context. I'm 20F and I work in a small pet store chain in my hometown. We aren't under any high corporate standards in a sense and have some free reign. During this shift I was alone so I had no real backup unless I called someone. We've gone into another mask mandatory state, so some kicks are kicking up yet another fuss, that's where this story comes in. Me equals me. Entitled dad equals ed. Nice mom equals nm. Nice kid equals nk. At work I am called the store face, the reason is I'm often more customer oriented than behind the scenes business oriented, that's for my managers to deal with. I am often set at the front of the store, because I am cheery and polite to customers and it takes a lot to kick me down. Today was different. The door chimes and in comes this larger guy and his kid, the kid has a mask but the dad doesn't, immediately I react. Me, hiya sir. I apologize but you do need a mask to be in the store. By the time I say this the kid goes and wanders to the fish section and stays out of the way without causing a fuss. However in the time before I could finish the sentence ED has slapped a little laminated paper down on the counter. ED, actually I have an exemption and therefore I don't need one, now can I get some service? I am baffled by this man's audacity and just stared at him for a brief moment. I had heard of people using these, but this was my first time dealing with one. Me, I see, I'm sorry, but I can't accept this as we aren't accepting these, I can offer other things to help you get your bugs, I do still have to ask you to either wear a mask or leave. ED, this is discrimination, and I still have human rights. Me, I'm so sorry this is just a policy I have to follow. ED, oh my god, it's a policy. Not a law. You have no right to enforce this on me. Quick note, it is by law mandatory to wear masks and my head office says that exemptions are not allowed. Me, I'm really sorry but this is just what I'm told to do. ED, you know this is discrimination and I can sue you, is that what you want? Do you want a lawsuit for discrimination? I'm not sure what he was pulling anymore, this wasn't discrimination this was simply policy. This is also where I begin to lose my patience. Me, sir I am simply following head office's policy this isn't a personal situation. ED, you are denying me my rights. You are being discriminatory and if I don't get what I need I will sue you and your company. This is where I may have pulled some unnecessary behavior and comments but I still kept a fairly calm appearance. Me, sir I am paid minimum wage I don't have any control and I am only paid to enforce them. We ended up getting into a back and forth of me trying to politely ask him to leave and him telling me that I am being a discriminatory a asterisk asterisk hole who wasn't providing a service. Me, sir you have to leave, this is a private establishment you are trespassing. Ed, you are not a private establishment, you are in the private sector. Me, we are a retail store yes, but you still have to leave or I have to consider that you're trespassing. Ed, I just want my bugs or I will sue you for discrimination. I give up by now and I half slam my hands on the counter and glare at him. Me, I will get you your bugs, just wait outside. Get out and wait for your bugs. He somehow complies and slams a $5 bill on the counter and I shove it back. We have cricket cards which are pre-bought cards for crickets, so it saves money and time for the customer and ourselves. They are clipped to signify how many crickets were left. Me, I don't want your money, I have a cricket card that I can pull from so you get them. I walk away from the till and angrily and grabbed his bugs and stomped back to the counter and reaching for the card. He's still in the store, he's still trying to shove a $5 bill in my face. Ed, God what is your problem? I snapped, I have never yelled at a customer before and have done my best to stay calm. I lost my cool though and I slammed my hands down onto the counter. Before I can say anything he turns to the mother and daughter that have just wandered in, they had ordered something earlier and were wanting to pick it up. ED, this girl is only serving me because I threatened to sue them, how pathetic of her. I had turned to clip the card to remove the bugs before he begins to yell at me again. ED, oh my god. 
Take my money so I can have my damn bugs and change. I cave into my anger. Me, I have told you already sir that I am using a cricket card. Please wait outside. ED turns to the mother and continues on his tirade about how awful I'm being. ED, she is discriminating me. You should leave before she insults you and takes away yours and your daughter's rights. This is where I realize this woman was not on his side. NM, we're actually picking something up. ED turns back to me and starts knocking on the plexiglass that is on my counter. Ed, hello can I have my bugs? I have never been so angry with someone, in that moment nothing else existed but him. Me, get your kid and get out of my store. You will not get your bugs until you leave. This got his attention and he called for his kid, and they left and waited outside, but not without an angry glare. I wake before stomping to the door and opening it enough before shoving the bag of bugs through the door where once again ED proved to me he wasn't listening. ED, don't you want my money? Me, no. And with that bitter remark I shut the door and lock it for a moment, so he couldn't get back in before going to NM and NK. I put on a smile and try to muster up my happy retail face, and have an apologetic smile. Me, I am so so sorry for that scene, I truly don't act out like that and I hope you don't take this as the face of our company, let me grab your tags for you. I go back behind the counter on the verge of tears and grab the tags I engraved for them and bring them over. NM takes them and smiles wide. NM, these look fantastic. You did a wonderful job. NK, whoa. The font is fancy. I nod and step back a bit and NM could see I was still distressed and her smile shifts into something nicer. NM, you don't deserve that, it's awful that people target retail employees. I start to tear up and took a moment, I wipe my face and chuckle to keep composed. Me, sorry I don't mean to cry, but thank you it means a lot. NM, my oldest daughter works retail and she always come home so exhausted and upset from work, people have gotten no better have they? Me, no they haven't. NM gives me a careful smile, thank you for the tags, we know where to shop for things we need. She gives a wider smile, and I lead them out and unlock the door. I never thought I'd have to deal with that, but I did, and it ended with me breaking my good streak with customers. I feel upset with myself for letting my anger get the best of me, but I'm also aware that I wasn't entirely in the wrong. EM lets her son destroy 100 years old antique table. Apologies if this sounds like a tangent it happened as night and I'm still fuming. On mobile. I24F, previously posted in our slash child free about one of my mother's younger friends in EM, early 40SF, who I first knew as carefree and wonderful until she had her first kid. That child ended up being a complete brat, with her mother's encouragement. But EM had another child, a son, for M, who I kind of liked because he wasn't as intense as his older sibling. As of last night, that has changed. For context, my mother's greatest joy in life other than her kids is antiquing. She dresses every room in her house very carefully and will stop at every vintage shop around to find a piece of furniture, sometimes using road trips to find new antique stores and examine what is inside. I used to hate going with mom to these stores, but since she took all three of us kids and told us that these used to belong to other people, I think it gave us an early respect for other people's things. We were never the kids to break stuff or jump on furniture, in our homes or anyone else's, and I'm pretty sure that contributed to it. When she was pregnant with my oldest sibling in 1990, mom found a small circular wooden table with three curved legs topped with a circle of marble. The shop proprietor told her it was 70 years old, so she bought it for a song, shined it up and stuck it in her living room, where it immediately became a staple of our house. The coffee table lasted her through three kids' college graduations, a move in 2000 and countless family parties and events, still shiny and looking new and gorgeous. It's as much a part of the family now as any of us kids. Now, to last night. EM's birthday recently occurred. So since she had given mom a birthday celebration last month, mom decides to return the favor, inviting EM, her husband, and their kids to our house for lobster. 
Already I'm not a fan of this. Whenever EM and her kids come over my mom makes a serious effort to give the kids something fun to do while the adults talk. We have a collection of coloring books, blocks, dolls, Legos, puzzles, action figures and a TV in the basement from when my siblings and I were growing up, and mom even bought them some new toys herself, but inevitably the kids will play down there for two minutes and then come to their mom to complain that they're bored, then proceed to wreak havoc on our house. My parents, who EM sees as her kids aunt and uncle, have warned the kids many times not to jump on things, but they do not listen. The oldest kid is also very combative and likes to pull hair and hit people, as I learned firsthand, and broke a holiday decoration given to my dad by his late mother. Of course, EM coddles her kids and coos that they're the best in the world and all that BS. I've told my mom repeatedly that I don't want to be around the kids or their parents, but she brushes it off. In fact, she likes to tease me for not interacting with EM and not coming downstairs when EM visits, and says that EM shouldn't get in the way of me living my life. I live with my folks and am invited to attend the party, but make my usual choice of opting out. Since I've just finished the first week of a new job, I intend to celebrate with a day at the bookstore and a night with friends. But yesterday morning, as I was preparing to leave, mom asked why I was going to leave her to deal with the two kids by herself. I told her that I wasn't going to let them get in the way of living my life, she laughed and wished me a good day, and I left. My day was wonderful I spent the morning and early afternoon at my favorite bookstore, the evening with my friends at a wine bar, and the night with them at a karaoke room. I come home around 11.30 that night and enter from a door in our sunroom, where my parents are asleep on the couch watching TV. I wake them up, tell them about my day, and they seem genuinely happy it went so well. To be polite, I ask how the party went. My folks get quiet and look at each other, and my mother, sounding very drained, tells me to go into the living room, the next room over. Confused, I look through the doorway and immediately see why. The beautiful table, now a century old, is broken. Its three curved wooden legs were bisected and splintered, there's a small crack in the marble top, and a collection of wood shards litter the carpet. What happened? I asked. Earlier that day, around 6.30 p.m., my dad and EM's husband went to pick up my grandpa, plus a steamer for the lobster. While they were away, mom had worked to settle the kids in the basement and reminded them not to jump on anything, then gone to the living room to converse with EM. As they are talking, my mother leaves to go to the restroom at the other end of the house. She stops in the kitchen before returning and hears a crash in the living room. Mom runs in dash. And lo and behold, son had become bored, come upstairs to the living room and started jumping on furniture, including the ancient table, while EM watched. My mother is predictably horrified and stares as EM examines son for injuries and reassures mom that the kid is fine. Mom gets sick to her stomach, takes son aside and tells him in a serious, but not yelling voice that auntie is very disappointed in him and that he knows the rules at her house. EM overhears and berates mom, telling her that she is the only one who can speak that way to her kids before coddling son and telling him that he's going to be okay. Mom then outright asks EM if she herself told the kids not to jump on furniture at our house. EM replies casually, no, I didn't tell them not to. The husbands return and all three men are shocked. EM's husband immediately offers to pay a carpenter to fix the table, which my mother accepts. Dinner goes on, but it is cold and impersonal between mom and EM. This morning, EM, son and the husband came by our house to give mom a bouquet of flowers, an apology, and the number of a carpenter who they'll pay for. She puts on a smile and says thank you, but is very upset nonetheless. My dad doesn't want the kid in our house until he's older. Mom says she'll be keeping her distance from EM for the time being, since she can't teach her kids to respect other people's property or discipline them properly. My heart breaks for my mom. I don't plan on having kids, but if you do, please teach them at an early age to respect other people and their things. 